Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our celebration of the Eucharist. We welcome also all those joining us from home this morning. Our celebrant at this Mass is Father Don, and we remember in a special way Mrs. Sweeney. Please rise. Jesus entered a village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the love of the Lord Jesus be with you all. Be with you, Good morning. Good morning, Father. Good morning, everybody at home as well. We have a change this morning. Uh, the Holy Father, uh, some time ago, it was past year, decided that when we celebrate the feast of St. Martha, we should also celebrate Mary and Lazarus, the three of them together. And so it now has become a feast of brothers and sisters which I think is a particularly nice uh, sh transition or shift for us in our, our church calendar. And so coming together as God's family, <clears throat> let us ask the Father's forgiveness for his full of gentleness and compassion. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, whose Son was pleased to be welcomed in St. Martha and Mary and Lazarus' house as a guest, grant that through their intercession, serving Christ faithfully in our brothers and sisters, we may merit to be received by you in the halls of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses did exactly as the Lord had commanded him. On the first day of the first month of the second year, the dwelling was erected. It was Moses who erected the dwelling. He placed its pedestals, set up its boards, put in its bars, and set up its columns. He spread the tent over the dwelling and put the covering on top of the tent, as the Lord had commanded him. He took the commandments and put them in the ark. He placed poles alongside the ark and set the proprietary upon it. He brought the ark into the dwelling and hung the curtain veil, thus screening off the ark of the commandments, as the Lord had commanded him. Then the cloud covered the meeting tent, and the glory of the Lord filled the dwelling. Moses could not enter the meeting tent, because the cloud settled down upon it, and the glory of the Lord filled the dwelling. Whenever the cloud rose from the dwelling, the children of Israel would set out on their journey. But if the cloud did not lift, they would not go forward. Only when it lifted did they go forward. In the daytime, the cloud of the Lord was seen over the dwelling, whereas at night, fire was seen in the cloud by the whole house of Israel in all the stages of their journey. The word of the Lord. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord, mighty God. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord, my soul yearns and pines for the courts of the Lord. 
my heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord, mighty God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest, in which she puts her young. Your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord, mighty God. Blessed they who dwell in your house, continually they praise you. Blessed the men whose strength you are, they go from strength to strength. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord, mighty God. I had rather one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I had rather lie at the threshold of the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord, mighty God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Open your hearts, O Lord, to listen to the words of your Son. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus entered a village where a woman whose name was Martha welcomed him. She had a sister named Mary, who sat beside the Lord at his feet, listening to him speak. Martha, burdened by much serving, came to him and said, Lord, do you not care? that my sister has left me by myself to do the serving. Tell her to help me. And the Lord said to her in reply, Martha, Martha, you're anxious and worried about many things. There's need of only one thing. Mary's chosen the better part, and it will not be taken from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. I think if you can capture humor in, in written word, uh, Luke tries to do that probably here more than anywhere else in, in the gospel when he says, Martha burdened with much serving. <laughs> she was out taking care of making some coffee, you know? <laughs> but she was aware of what was going on. And I think that what the church has done is said, well, let's look at the whole picture of the family. And how interesting that it, it happens to parallel today, that reading from the Old Testament where where Moses and God have this relationship. They go and sit and, and chat together, and um, it becomes a, sort of their, their place for coffee, if you like that. And, and Moses, very happy when, the, when the, uh, the cloud goes up. Uh, but it's that intimacy of, of them being together, and then Mary and Joseph, or Mary and uh, Martha, and Lazarus with her, and the two of them, the three of them together become kind of, again, uh, sort of a, a place where the Lord comes to dwell, and, and that's the blessing of their house, wouldn't it be? Great to have Jesus come and just live with you or stay with you. Some people think that perhaps um, the three of them ran kind of an inn, uh, kind of a little uh, bed and breakfast, if you like, where Jesus and his family maybe had, through the years, fallen into the habit of staying whenever they came to Jerusalem for the feast. And so it was a very familiar place. I think that's a nice way to think about what went on. Uh, certainly there was a connection that was much deeper than innkeeper. Uh, <coughs> ill, uh, Lazarus becomes ill, sisters write real quickly and say, Jesus, better get here, and Lazarus is he's not well, he's not going to make it, and then we want you to be here for that. Um, so Jesus gives him a few days before he comes, and he finally comes, and <coughs> of course, Lazarus has already died, which Jesus says, that that will work okay in the plan that we have to set before people, and so we know that Lazarus comes back to life. <coughs> Brothers and sisters, um, I know about your life and my life, that's become a real source of, uh, of companionship for me. Uh, my brothers and sisters and people who, who are really important and everybody else is kind of back to where they were at before uh, when I was uh, in parish and priest. Those, at that time, those were the important people. Well, once again, as you get older, you find that maybe brothers and sisters become important again. It's really for Martha and Mary and Lazarus. They were important and I think the church 
And the Holy Father wants us to say, ah, we need to, <coughs> excuse me, we need to acknowledge that there are a lot of relationships in our lives that are really important to bringing us to God. Uh, typically, church is offered up one saint at a time. The truth be told, uh, I think we often miss the chance to offer up husbands and wives, couples. So, for example, some scripture scholars would suggest that the, the couple who are riding, walking on the road to Emmaus were a husband and wife couple. Uh, and so the church invites us to, to expand our understanding of what holiness looks like of where God dwells and in whom God can dwell in our lives. I think today's a good example for us to look and recognize that who are the people in our lives that together, when we're together, bring the presence of Jesus in a special way to us? And how do we appreciate them? And how can we give God thanks for them today? Let us bring our petitions before the Lord, trusting in his mercy and compassion. For the church throughout the world, may she increase in number and holiness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all who govern, may the Lord enlighten their hearts and minds as they fulfill their obligations to those they serve. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all who suffer from chronic pain, may the Lord strengthen and encourage them in hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all in our faith community who feel lonely and isolated, may the Lord touch their hearts and lift up their spirits. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all the faithful departed, May the Lord reward them with eternal joy in his presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those persons whose names are written in our box of petitions, and for all of the intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, hear these prayers we have brought before you in faith and ask for them in accordance with your divine will. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we've received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. My friends, pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God our Father Almighty. As we proclaim your wonders in Saints Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, O Lord, we humbly implore your majesty that as their homage of love was pleasing to you, 
so to our dutiful service they find favor in your sight. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It's truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you made your church fruitful with strength ever new, and offer us sure signs of your love, and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled. Their great example lends us courage, their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we do give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, 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 You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. May calling therefore these gifts by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this now. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death and Lord, so you come again. Hmm. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Pope Francis, Bishop Gerald, and all leaders in the church. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. Then with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and for by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father,
peace to the Lord be with you all And with your spirit. Let's acknowledge to one another our desire for peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us your peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy of the to enter into my room, but only to say the word and my soul shall be. The communion antiphon. Martha said to Jesus, You are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into this world.
Let us pray. May the holy reception of the body and blood of your only begotten Son, O Lord, turn us away from the cares of this fallen world, so that following the example of Saints Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, we may grow in sincere love for you on earth and rejoice to behold you for eternity in heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now, this is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Good day. Thanks to all of you.